Hey folks, it's Mangrel. Welcome back to the channel. And in this video, we're going to install the DJI O3 air unit into our next frame. So we're doing the installation into this frame here. This is the five inch freestyle FPV cycle glide. And we already did a very similar installation video on this frame. This is my three inch frame. So I think based on lessons learned here, this should be a very uh, straightforward installation because you can see a lot of space back here for the Vista. You can see plenty of space between these two standoffs, which was of course the complication on the three inch frame. So I think this should be pretty straightforward, but let's look at a couple of things that you will need and a couple of 3D prints before we get started. So the first thing that I did have to do is the antenna because here I am using a singularity, true RC singularity. And this is a 5.8 gigahertz antenna. And of course, it's only one antenna. Whereas on the O3 Air unit, you require a dual band. So this is a 2.4 gigahertz as well as a 5.8 gigahertz antenna. And of course, you can see there's two antenna built into this one lobe. So I went ahead and I designed something very similar in terms of a 3D print for the new antenna. So we'll have to swap that over. So you do have to print this. Again, all these designs are in Thingiverse. I will link you in the video description. I don't want you running around trying to find files and, and things. I'll try and make this as simple as possible. Next, you'll require this print. And this is something that I designed and put on Thingiverse. But ultimately, this takes the 25 by 25 mounting pattern of the O3 Air unit and converts it into a regular 20 by 20. So that you can use this on a lot of the quads that you already have with Vista. Now, someone um, went ahead and redesigned my print, remixed it, and made it such that you can go ahead and install this using the existing screws on the O3 Air unit. Now, I tried it. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about uh, the redesign, only because there isn't much thread already in here. And when you add this additional material, it doesn't have too much bite. And you're using that to hold down the air unit. So I still suggest um, going ahead and getting these small screws here. So these are M1.6 by eight millimeter. So I'm going to do this now with the new remix design, but still using these longer screws. And I think that will give us a way better experience. So let me go ahead and get this all taken apart. And then once the Vista is out and once the, the camera is out, I'll come back and we'll take a look. I've got the quad almost fully apart. Let's take a look at how I got this all designed and laid out. So the camera is sitting up here all by itself. So of course, new camera will go there as well. I've got the Vista in a 20 by 20 back here. So I think the O3 should fit in perfectly here. We'll swap up the antenna and then we can wire it in here. So I think it'll be a very, very straightforward installation. And we're all apart. Here we have the Cadex Vista, Nebula Pro, flight controller, antenna. It all came out in one bundle like this. And now if you look at the quad, here's how the quad looks like. I also took out the screws here that was holding down the, the Vista. That's all good. Now I may have to take the motors off to get the camera wire underneath here but we'll have to see where that lines up. So let me switch over to the O3 Air unit. We'll have to prepare that one and then we'll come back to this. You will require a P800, so Phillips 00 screwdriver to open up these screws. And ultimately I'm going to place the O3 Air unit in its right direction. So it'll be just like this, up is up, down is down. Now, lessons learned from the prior installation where we did this on the three inch, I've already removed these screws and I've taken the antenna off. I will loosen these screws here because these screws are so fragile. I don't want to risk stripping anything out or breaking any screws, which is what happened last time. In case if any of these screws are too long, it's one continuous channel from here, from here all the way up to here. So if the screw sizes are somehow messed up, they will collide and something will, will break. So, so bad things will happen. By me opening these up, I'm able to catch that just in case. So now what I wanna do is take all these screws on the back side out. So there's four of them. And this is what we will replace with our new screws. So the M1.6 by eight. 
So I'm going to remove all this. And then if I forget, you guys remind me, I need to put my cable in, my power cable, because we do want to route that power cable underneath our TPU holder. And while we're doing this, let me show you the holder once more. So this is the one I'll link you in the video description. I printed this in TPU. Now I use a little bit of a harder TPU, but that's not a big deal. So now we'll just go ahead and put this on here. The holes will line up because this is designed for a 25 by 25. We'll take our screws and then we'll just go ahead and screw them in. So let me line everything up. Oh, oh, you see, you guys didn't remind me, the cable. I gotta put the cable in. So uh, both sides are the same. So we'll just plug this guy in and then we wanna route this under here. Kind of leave a little bit of slack at the end. So we'll kind of route it like that. We'll clean it up afterwards. But this is how it seems to work really well. Okay, now I can go ahead and tighten these down. Just bear in mind, we've removed the screws from the O3 air unit. So what that means is the two cases can open up, the flaps for the cables can open up. So just keep a little bit of pressure on it and then go ahead and screw it in. So again, these are very small screws. Don't go crazy. You don't need a lot of pressure. Okay, so I've gotten all four screws started. I want to just organize these cables. I don't want them to be overlapping like that. I've gotten the cables all flattened and in order. So let me go ahead and tighten these screws. And again, I can't keep stretching this enough. Don't over tighten. So that to me is good enough. If you over tighten, you will strip something and you're gonna be very unhappy. So don't over tighten. As soon as it grabs, that is enough. All right. So now what you can see here is that you've got just a little bit of a gap between them where the cables are running. So nothing's under pressure and I can already see my tops opening up. So let me go ahead and tighten these screws I loosened. So here, if our screw sizes are incorrect, we will feel resistance before this screw tightens. So everything's good. And everything is good so that was just a little bit of a, of a precaution just to make sure that, that bad things don't happen so this is this is good to go so right now we've got this ready to go next step is i'm going to go ahead and mount this into our frame so it should mount kind of exactly like this over here looks like cable length wise we should be good and then I will play around with this and see which hole we want because we have two holes for the camera. So we can go inner hole, outer hole, we can go up or down. So a lot of options and I'll have to see which is the best because we want to position this probably something like this so we don't get anything in view. Let me play with that and I will be back. And the O3 air unit is installed and I've determined the cable for the camera should go in between the flight controller and the ESC because our O3 air unit is propped up a little bit. So it seems to line up better that way. And you can see that wire is pretty straight. And to mount it, all I did was I took some M2 by five millimeter screws and I put it in here. And on this build, so far I haven't had to cut any screws. Everything is just fitting perfectly. So this is a lot easier than my three inch. A three inch we have to trim screws, cut screws and all these crazy things. So you can see it fits and it does not come through and in contact with the air unit. So this is working fairly well. Now I've determined for the camera, we want to use um, the top or bottom hole. They're, they're both fine because you can move these up and down. So you want to move these down. I am going to use the lower screw and the front one. Do something like that. But the first thing I need to do, I need to manage this wire. So I'm just going to kind of twist it once. And I think by me twisting it, I should be able to eat up that slack. So it should give me a little bit of a twist there like that. So I can now install this. So let me go ahead and put these screws in and then I'll be right back. 
looks like I spoke too soon. We will have to shave a little bit of these screws. So even on this quad, these screws are too long. So you can see right now this top screw, I put it all the way in as a visual. And I'm not sure this will come across in the video, but right now when it's all the way in, the amount of thread left is almost exactly the same size as this TPU mount. So it's not giving me the ability of tightening this down enough so you can see it still moves. So I'm going to have to take these out, get them on the Dremel, just shave a little bit. Like I'm talking about probably half a millimeter just to make sure that it does give a good bite. And the camera is installed. I did shave the screw just a little tiny bit and I mean less than millimeter, so maybe half a millimeter. And that camera looks like it is pretty well positioned and I'm hoping I don't get too much standoff or top deck in view. I did run into an issue back here. You can see that little bit of a size difference between the O3 and the Vista. This antenna here is hitting the O3. So you won't have that problem because I will redesign this mount and give you a, a working print file. But I have to redesign this, reprint this. This is an hour print. So I will move on to the next step while this prints and then come back here. Now this here is super tight. Getting this antenna into this uh, 3D print mount is super tight. So the trick to get this back out again is use a hairdryer to heat this up. And when you heat it up, it will loosen and then you can remove the antenna. Otherwise that is not coming back out again. So that will be done. In the meantime, I am gonna go ahead and do the wiring. I also noticed that this front arm is actually broken. So you can see it's starting to delaminate and even check out the tightness or stiffness. And this was hiding underneath the tape. So if I hadn't removed the tape for this wiring, I would never would have seen this. So let me go ahead and design a new file, print a new file. I will do the wiring. I will change that arm and then we will be back. And we're back. I've got the new antenna mount all designed and printed. You can see at the back here, it's flat, plus has more of an opening here. And one thing to bear in mind, I haven't mentioned, when you're inserting the antenna, make sure that the DJI is pointing the right way up. That ensures that these connectors are also pointing the right way up. So that's complete. I went ahead and changed the arm. So here's a closer look at the broken arm. So it still has decent strength, but definitely weakened. I also noticed that the standoff that goes over here, that was also stripped. So they're all fixed. I've also gone ahead and done the wiring. So in terms of the wiring, I put everything back to the same place it was. So if I go through the wires, and I'll give you the wiring diagram, but here's VBAT. So I do run my air units off of pure battery voltage. And the reason why I do that is in case the back or the regulator on the air unit fails, I don't want to lose the video. So I just find it's a trade up between cleaner power and those kind of fail safes. So I prefer that. Um, RX and TX, so this goes to the TX pad. This goes to the RX. Here I've got my S bus going to R1 and here is a signal ground. So let me go ahead and install this antenna and I'll be right back. So I know I'll have to do a little bit of a twisty twist over here, but no different than what I had to do on the uh, three inch. And here's the antenna. So this revision does work and you can see that it does barely clear here. And I gave the antenna one rotation this way and that helped me clean up the cables a little bit. So over here, you can see the cables do twist. And if you take a closer look, you can see that uh, the cables are tucked away neatly there. So that was the, the toughest part. So let me go ahead and put the top deck on, reassemble, and we should be done. And it's complete, turned out really, really well. You can see the camera fits in there perfectly. Lots of range of adjustability for the camera angle. It does point a little bit out. So this point here comes out of the frame a little bit. So I suspect it could go a little bit further in just to protect the camera a bit more, but everything else fits together really, really well. So let me go ahead and activate the air unit. I will do a little bit of configuration updates in beta flight, and then we'll take it outside for its first test flight. One, two, three, and we're off. 
Here you're looking at the recording from the goggle DVR. So this is what I see when I fly. I'm also recording with the air unit on board along with my GoPro. The audio you're hearing is from the GoPro. And right away we're seeing that the megabits are not holding a solid 50 megabits. I'm not that far away. I'm on your left in, in those trees there tucked away a little bit. So a bit of a surprise, I figured we will see a solid 50 megabits, but possible that these are very dense uh, pine trees and that's why we're seeing some impact to megabits, mm, perhaps. All right, so we're seeing props in view, no surprise there. We're also seeing a bit of the top deck and that um, perhaps we can adjust the camera a little bit but the FOV is just, the field of view is just so wide on this camera that that's gonna happen. We're now looking at the onboard recording so we can see less of the top deck in view and it looks like my camera is a bit slanted. That's why we see more on the left than the right of the top deck. But everything seems to be working fairly well, no weird vibrations. I do notice that the exposure correction algorithm on the O3, it's too slow. So you can see it becomes super exposed and then it starts to become darker. So here, super bright, I'm going blind and then starts to correct. That's too slow. Now we're looking at the GoPro and the GoPro with the camera butter ND filter, silky smooth, very cinematic like. And I know DJI is trying to be a replacement for the GoPro but I don't think we're there yet. Just compare these two. So let me switch back over now to the onboard. Yeah, so you can see field of view actually seems very similar between them, but just the smoothness, the ability of capturing some of those shadow details, not there yet. And right into the post. And this is funny because in the playback, it looks like I went uh, face first into that post. But in the goggles when I was flying this, I thought I actually cleared it. So I don't know if there's a difference between what I'm seeing in the goggles, especially given some of the fitment issues versus the playback. But I thought, honestly, I thought I cleared that thing and then I was caught a little bit off guard. But thankfully I did not, uh, I didn't disarm. And again, we're seeing the onboard recording of the O3, super bright, dark, super bright. But again, capturing lots of good details. We're back now to the GoPro. Yeah, the GoPro is, is just, it's something else. It's a lot more cinematic, especially on a five inch. We have the ability of carrying the extra weight. So I don't think I will be replacing my GoPro with this O3. It's just not there yet for the five inch. Yeah, perhaps once they fix the correction algorithm, um, also, just to let you know, I do not have the image stabilization turned on. So right now the EIS on the O3 is off. So there you have it. The first flight of this frame completed. Looking fairly good. Some tweaks to be made. But hope you like this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment.